All right, welcome in to our DNVR Draft Day Live preview series. Talking oh, about Broncos baby. targets, trying to figure out who this team is going to be adding as they move into the 2021 season. And guys, I want to start with the ninth pick because that's where the Broncos are. But as we know, there's an opportunity. They could trade up. They could trade back. That we're going to talk about in future breakdowns. Today, we're going to talk about nine. And where I want to start, Dre, is a dream scenario. Give me the perfect scenario that could play out for the Broncos at the ninth pick. In this class, it really starts with the quarterbacks, where you're hoping we know almost certainly three quarterbacks go in the first three picks. Seems like a good shot that another goes uh, at the fourth pick or within the next couple. Will one of the top five drop to the Broncos? And will the guy drop and be a dream scenario, maybe a Justin Fields, or a bit of a nightmare in a Mac Jones? But I asked you the question. So what's the dream scenario? To me, the dream scenario is 100% the NFL overthinking this and letting Justin Fields drop. How possible do you think that is? Well, that is more about how much you trust people gauging the temperature of the NFL. I think it is possible. I think we're looking at maybe a 40% chance that he drops. Okay. Those that listen to the Broncos podcast will know my take on this. I don't think it is a dream scenario for mm. Justin Fields to fall to nine. Now, in theory, in <laughs> theory, on paper, yes, it is. Yes. But if the Broncos are sitting there and the fifth pick comes up and – Justin Fields is still on the board, and they're not trying to jump. And then the sixth pick, and the seventh pick, and the eighth pick. It tells me either they have incredible intel on what yes. else is going on, yes. and if that yes. is, you know, you tip your cap to uh, General Peyton over there Absolutely. and say, wow, you're incredible. Or you say what I'm thinking, which is you didn't love him enough to jump up, and then when he fell to you at nine, you were just like, this – feels too good to be true I think we have to take him and I don't like that approach with the quarterback if it's your quarterback I want you to be saying I don't care what we have to give up yeah. I will do anything to have Justin Fields in our building tomorrow I will say that on our first mock draft that we did the first live mock draft we did I picked for the Broncos and I went into that day thinking that I was not drafting a quarterback but the way things fell all the players I liked were gone and Justin Fields was still there. And so I just took Justin Fields because he was the best player on the board. And I know that you hate that. <laughs> yeah. I don't hate it But you didn't so have the much. chance to trade up. That is true. That is true. I wouldn't have, though. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Henry, what's your dream scenario? I'm going to get away from the quarterbacks. You know, we've talked about this a lot on the draft podcast. I feel like Drew Locke has shown enough that you want to give him one more year with a with his first actual offseason, with his first time getting the same offensive coordinator back. I just think it's probably too early to cut bait. And I like the idea of like adding assets in the future so you could potentially trade up in the future if you want to replace him. But to me, quarterback isn't the dream scenario. The dream scenario, Penny Sewell. Mm. And I didn't think that there was a chance that Penny Sewell was going to be there at nine a month ago, two months yeah. ago. Yeah. But the way we've seen things change with the quarterbacks moving up and people, I I'm not sure what it is, but it seems like they're kind of sleeping on Penny Sewell. Mm -hmm. They really like Rashawn Slater. Yeah. I think that that's a possibility. And I think that that would be the dream scenario. That is a that's a huge dream scenario. I mean, yeah. there was a mm -hmm. time when people thought he was like a shoe in to go number two in the draft. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Correct. For him to fall all the way to nine, which actually to me feels a little bit more realistic than Fields falling to nine. To me, that is. I mean, you knocked it out of the park if you get that mm -hmm. to, to happen. On the other side, I can't get this guy out of my mind, and it's Kyle Pitts. Yeah, if he falls to the Broncos at nine, which again. We're talking dream scenarios, not exactly likelihoods here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you talk about, oh, Noah Fant, you know, Albert Okuebunam, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. This, yeah. to me, is a best player available draft. And mm -hmm. if Kyle Pitts is on the board, he's the best player available. Mm -hmm. And you take him. And you figure out whatever else you have to do well after that. But, you know, I like Albert Okuebunam. He is not a don't draft Kyle Pitts because you have him kind of guy. Mm -hmm. We're talking about an athletic freak, a matchup nightmare. Yeah. And you can figure out what, you have, what you're going to do with these three matchup nightmares that you have. Maybe you trade one. Maybe you start building some insane three tight end packages. Please, Pat Shermer, be creative if that happens. <laughs> but to me, if, that, if you have an opportunity to add a guy like him, you don't think about your roster. You just add him. No, what you're thinking about isn't Noah Fant, Albert O. You're thinking about Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller. 
Because yeah. that's the kind of dude you're getting in Kyle Pitts. Right. And you're thinking Aaron Hernandez and Robert Gronkowski. Mm-hmm. Like, that mm-hmm. is the yep. type of group that you're putting together there. For and sure. you saw what those guys did. Uh, I don't know why I called him Robert, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he's ever forward. been called. Robert. I don't think he knows his name is Robert. I kind of like think, it. I'm gonna start calling him that. He it's would like, be surprised if you called like him in that. his old age. You know, yeah. he's, he's become Robert. Gronkowski. I don't think he will. No, he'll be. He Bob. will. He'll yeah. be Bob. He might lose letters. Bob they Gronk. might just call Bob him like Gronkowski. Gronkowski sounds amazing. I like it. Yeah, yeah. With Pitts, I mean, you have to do it, right? Yeah, again, I see. I see him neck and neck with Sewell. Uh, I think that both of them are just that sort of freak. And maybe with Sewell, you can come up with like one or two more questions. But even with Pitts, you have questions about the blocking. Yeah. And yeah. you know, we've talked about this before. It doesn't matter. He nobody can cover him. It doesn't matter if people are not worried about him blocking. Plus, you can teach that anyway. I do think that to me, it's Sewell dream scenario, and then a quarterback falls, Pitts falls. Either one, that's probably the move. Pitfalls. Let's see what you did there. Mm, yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's come back to reality a little bit here. Let's come yeah. back down to earth. Smart. If the Broncos stay at nine, what are the more realistic scenarios, Dre? I think you look at a lot of talent on the defensive side. You have a couple linebackers, both in Micah Parsons and Jeremiah Wusa Koroma. Koromo. No. Koromo. <laughs> you got so okay. close. <laughs> I, I got two names in. Um, yeah, I think, you know. It'll be interesting if either is a Vic Fangio kind of guy because Vic has a, has a unique taste in linebackers, to say the least. I think you look at some of the top cornerbacks in this class, mm-hmm. Hank, and there's a lot of pass rushing talent as well if you're looking ahead for kind of an heir apparent to Von Miller. Yeah, and to me, JOK, Micah Parsons, there's just too much bust potential for me to really love them at nine. Yeah. I, I feel like the value starts to even out right around like 14, 15. And then if you grab one in the 20s, you're thrilled with it. But at nine, guys like that where it's like, we don't know what position Jeremiah Wosu Kormoa plays. Is, is, he a, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? Like he can cover in theory because yeah. of the tools he has. He hasn't shown that he can cover. He struggles like moving forward sometimes, like reading what's in front of him. He has the tools, though, and that's the same thing with Micah Parsons. And to me, I, I see the appeal. I think that those probably are the the next up targets with with the cornerbacks, with like Patrick Sertain I put in front of the other guys. But the value definitely drops off once you start talking about those guys. Yeah, and 100%. I think Sertan, Farley, Horn, like one of those corners – to me, feels like the most realistic thing to do there. And I know Broncos fans are saying, but look what we did in free agency mm-hmm. and look what we have. And, and I'm with you. It's why this ninth pick is kind of weird. Why I'm, I'm almost more excited to talk about the trade up, trade down scenarios yeah. yep. because you're sitting there at nine and it's like you could potentially get the best defensive player on the board. Yeah. 100%. Who is the best defensive player on the board? I don't even know. That's what's weird about this. So, yeah. like, maybe you do go corner and you just say, look, we're building for the future at corner. Um, we really love one of these guys. Right. We didn't have the right trade back partner, whatever. But it is weird, you know. Y- you talk about the the eight picks in front of the Broncos, and you can absolutely see them all going offense. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. I mean, might almost seem likely. And I think cornerback, like edge rusher, would make a lot of sense. You know? Yeah, they're both yeah, needs. Weird, though. You don't have yeah. a need now, but looking forward to twenty twenty two, you probably do. So you're. But, yeah, it'd, it'd be weird a team drafting in the top 10 with so many needs, new GM, and it's just, a, oh, we're getting a premium player for a year from now. Because what even happens? So so you have Kyle Fuller. He's your number one. You have Darby and Callahan. They're your two and three in yeah. some order. You have Ojemudia. You have Isang Bassi, who the Broncos were... Started at, week one. Exactly, yeah. as an undrafted rookie. Do you need another corner next year i think you probably do i'm not sure how people feel about michael ojimudi about bassy but if one of those two guys becomes a starter you already have darby you already have callahan do you move one of those guys to safety because cream jackson's gone I, there's a law you open a big can of worms if you bring a cornerback in but that's that's true of tight ends that's true of receivers it's definitely true of quarterbacks yeah that's why this is such a weird pick And it's why it's going to make this next part tough. I'm going to make you go on record. If the Broncos stay at number nine, who do they take? (laughs) I think I'm going to go Parsons. Wow. I, I, you know, they're going to, they're going to hope that Justin Fields is there because 
I I think that they're they're happy running it back with Drew. They're they're happier running it back, but with Justin Fields instead of Drew. Um, I, I think that they'd like Sewell. I, I think even Elijah Vera Tucker would be in that conversation. We haven't talked about this yet, Dre. But offensive line should also be a consideration. Yes, I, I think that there's enough, right enough tackle enough that questions. might be the biggest immediate hole. Exactly, yeah. and so I think maybe you look there, but. The best defensive player on the board, versatile piece, uh, somebody who Vic Fangio can kind of groom to fit into whatever he wants him to be is how I think he'll look at it. I, I think that Micah Parsons is probably the pick, with JOK probably not far behind. Yeah, I mean, Micah Parsons, mm-hmm. in terms of where he fits in in the NFL, reminds me a little bit of Justin Hollins, who was a Broncos mm-hmm. draft yeah. pick, of where like you didn't really know. You kind of wanted him to learn to play inside. Mm-hmm. He was more natural at outside, and I – I would love to use that as a reason why the Broncos would like Parsons, but they gave up on that experiment after one year. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I That might be a knock on Parsons, that For they sure. realize that these tweeners, it's just too tough to teach them that much that fast. Um, mm-hmm. But I think you're right in, sen- in the sense of, okay, if you're going to pick one of these guys, take the guy with, like, elite traits yeah. and figure yeah. out how to use yeah. him as Vic Fangio, you know, the guy who's basically the head coach because of how smart he is on defense. And the one thing that really – has turned me off the most from Parsons has been that he measured in with short arms. You know, all along it was, we hope that we can play him at middle linebacker because if he can put all the pieces together and be a guy who fits in there well and can play the run game, he should be a monster. If that doesn't work out, you put him outside. He should be a good pass rusher. Comes in with the shorter arms, and now you're like, well, what even is he as a pass rusher? I'm ready to not like the Micah Parsons pick, though. I think that that's where we're going. (laughs) Trey? I have some real questions about Micah Parsons. I think don't underestimate an edge rusher like Aziz Ojulari or a right tackle prospect like Christian Derrissaw. Mm-hmm. That said, I kind of side with you. Safe pick, safe prospect, safe kind of position of need. Patrick Sertain checks off all those boxes. That's my pick as well. Yeah. Um, I will say, and I think you guys agree with me here, I'm going to go on record saying they won't pick at nine. Uh, yep. it, they're either Love going that. up or down. Love uh, I agree. But if they do stay, I, I think they just, yeah, they go with the safe, safer pick. I mean, you, you've got the NFL pedigree and Patrick Sertan, I believe is the Absolutely. way it's pronounced. Um, <laughs> but either we go way, back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> either way, I think, you know, that would be the move. I just have really hard time seeing the more you talk about it, the more you look at the way this board, we expect it to fall, the harder it is to imagine the, that being a great scenario for the Broncos yeah. when hopefully you have, but you have a partner who's saying hey we really like this guy we're trying to jump up you know there's still gonna be wide receivers available then um you move back mm-hmm. someone jumps up and you get maybe the same guy yeah. yes. at 14 15 16 exactly i feel like jok should still be there and the difference between micah parsons jok to me is almost non-existent yeah in terms of value and you know it's jok plus a first rounder plus next year, Najee or Harris, a, yeah, plus or, the chance to trade exactly, or a yeah. second. You know, there's a lot of uh, of more, a lot more possibilities when you when you are able to move back a little yeah, bit, grab sure. some extra value. Mm-hmm. All right. In the next couple of videos here, we're going to break down the Broncos options if they trade up, the most exciting one, or if they trade back, like we just mentioned. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, hit us with a like, and we'll talk to you soon.